Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, family, and welcome back to the channel. We're just going to do a quick review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 1. I'm sorry, season 14, episode 1. It was titled The Edge of Fashion. Okay, we're going to just talk about the four people that were very interesting within the show. Even though to me it didn't get started till towards the end, which the last 30 minutes. But Sanya Richards Ross, she is a welcome addition to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. She gave me everything, everything. Okay, and then she gave me a little of her ethnicity okay her culture her jamaican roots honey she was talking that talk and her parents was walking that walk and talking that talk and i felt like i was an american jamaican okay i was feeling the whole thing okay now her husband aaron is another different thing and another different story i'm still sizing him up but you can tell sanya is an independent thinker she thinks for herself she makes her own goals her own rules and you have to comply she is one that compromises here and there but she ain't want to be made a fool out of either she will check her itch and she showed checked uh, San, uh what's her name drew sadora oh she was having fun with drew sadora because drew sadora talking about she was a track star this that and the third and they had this little they was at some athletic club where they were, you know, getting their exercise on and stuff of that nature. And they did a relay run uh, competition. And, of course, Sanya said she was not even going full throttle on her behind. But she left uh, Drew Store in the dust. In the dust. Okay, well, she should have left and she needed to be off the show. Because she ain't add nothing. It's just like her second time being on the show. Second season. Uh, I'm like, oh, we need to get rid of her. Because uh -uh, she need to go back to the game or something else where it's more of a better platform. Because she, she's just giving me dust. Dust, dust in the attic. That's what she's giving me. And I can't take it. I'm having an asthma attack. Whoo, but anyway, I need to get on all the girls besides Marlo. I don't know why y'all are putting y'all hard-earned money, okay, on foolishness. Y'all already have to be somewhat kind of ratchet to get the money. So, I don't understand why y'all are paying extra money for a new promo. That don't make much sense. And I got to agree with Marlo because we don't come here, or at least I don't come here for the promos. I don't even come here for the tags, to tell you the truth. I come here for what y'all going to show and tell me. Show and tell me. So y'all were piss poor on that whole idea of spending y'all hard working money when it could have been on something else. Trying to, you know, tell Bravo that y'all need a little better than what y'all look. Nope, y'all need to be acting better. Not looking better, but acting better. Okay? So, next time, that's just like me going to my job and I'm asking for a cheer. or ergonomical cheer. And they get it for me. But I want this top of the line cheer. You know, type of, um, what do you call it, cheer. Do you think I'm going to buy my own cheer? Top of the line cheer when they already gave me something that is conducive and it does work. You think I'm going to go out there and say, no, I don't want that cheer. I want me a, a, a real souped up type cheer. That's crazy as hell. And that's taking money out of my pocketbook that I can have dealing somewhere else. So y'all, y'all was pissed poor on that idea. I was with Marlo Hampton. I would have skipped that, that that uh photoshop or that photo press thing y'all did too i would i would have just got rid of it i wouldn't have came either but anyway that's just me and how i viewpoint and how i have my perspective on certain things let's get into kenya moore kenya moore is showing her true self like i know she would she was fooling y'all i told y'all don't step to the twirl don't step to the twirl unless you're gonna get bounced out with the wind okay don't mess with twirl twirl be trying to give y'all some space 
telling y'all nicely not to come for her and and, and y'all do it anyway and then y'all get trampled upon okay y'all get trampled upon from the wind that she's going to stir up and blow y'all all away okay she kind of like got a little bit in Sanya's behind <laughs> when she called her the bone collector in training <laughs> I was like wait one minute then she had to be addressed by Drew Sidora calling herself stepping to Kenya you know in a nice way but just really not the right time to be discussing anything y'all came to uh what do you call it? Show support for Marlo's little adventure she's going on now. Where she's going to have all her clothes that she's worn before. She's going to sell them out mostly to shows who need to style their cast members or whatever. And I'm like, Marlo, girl, do you come in every different size? Or are you catering to just one size? Because that shit did not make sense. I'm just saying, Marlo, you were doing a little bit too much and a little too extra. And then nobody get the vision. And you got pissed off about it. But it is what it is. But... Drew Zora called herself going over there trying to make amends with Kenya saying we didn't get off on the right foot and I want us to be nice. Can we have a do over and just like that? And Kenya would look at her like girl. Woo, let me hold back the thoughts that I want to say that I want to have come out my mouth on your ass, but I'm looking too pretty and I'm trying to breathe. I'm 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 getting into my meditative state where I won't go off on you, but I will give you an olive branch this time. But believe me, Drew Sador, that was your final warning to ever approach Kenya about anything when it comes to uh Y'all getting off on the wrong foot. Because Kenya, she can dissolve you in a minute. Like battery acid. Okay? And won't have any second thoughts about it. Because they already said Kenya had got uh, disqualified. Or not disqualified. But she got eliminated on Dancing with the Stars. And she wasn't feeling, you know, herself. Or wasn't feeling the situation. Then she's asked to come make a presentation. Or a, a exhibition. Uh, what do you call it? <laughs> <laughs> just to come and show up and show out in rare form but you know she was like okay okay i'm coming and i'm not feeling well and this fool got up here talking about me and her didn't get off on the right foot Ooh, i'm gonna give i'm gonna get her all the branches this one time i'm gonna give her all the branches one time and i'm like please please can you not not in the first episode don't don't tell i'm down in the first episode and in the third and the fourth i'll let you go <laughs> let you go because you had gave full warning and you tried to you know say this is the first episode i'm probably gonna give them another for the second episode but the third fourth and on, on up i'm gonna kill these people i'm gonna kill them i'm gonna kill them with slight kindness and a lot of viciousness because they asked for it then we got marlo hampton you know marlo hampton is very extra 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 and we can't say pull the plug on her because she ain't gonna do it and at first i thought she was gonna be a little bit too much from looking at the stuff that she was saying and advertising on her social media platform and how she was acting on these other shows uh, that she was doing promo press for Real Housewives of Atlanta season 14 and how she was going in conducting herself and it seemed like she was getting a little bit too above her britches you know what I'm saying she was coming off like a little conceited like Nene does when she go do her press conferences about the show and whatever she's doing in her life but after the first episode that I saw, she was true to form. She was still being her simplistic, over-the-top self and checking everybody she could check. Because she definitely checked all the women that uh, Kenya had called the bone collector in training, which was Sanya. <laughs> and Sanya and Drew and Sheree. Mostly Sanya and Drew were over there talking to Marlo about, you know, what this is all about. Her late, late archives and this, that, and third. And how Kenya and Candy wasn't feeling her. And they were talking about her. You know, and you know, of course Marlo had to go get a bitch together. So she went over there. And she was like full throttle on both women, Candy and um, Kenya. And Kenya was like, wait a minute, hold up. What are you doing? And, you know, of course Marlo, she said some cuss words here and there. And Kenya don't like nobody to cuss at her. And they're like, come with it and calm you know correct and in the midst of y'all fighting and fussing verbally you probably can throw some cuss words out because she'll pop the call you a bitch too <laughs> but not at the first stop so Kenny was trying to just you know be calm and collective while marlo was just ins uh insulting them hurling oats uh 
insults towards them and this that, and third is telling them they uncouth they don't know nothing about fashion she tried to teach them fashion but it is what it is but that was funny as hell when kenya said it's it's charade training uh saying to be a bone collector she becoming a bone collector trainee <laughs> like oh no oh no 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 Okay, then Candy gonna try to say, well, what did you hear? Well, this is what I said, you know, trying to get all into it. I'm like, Candy, sit, simmer down, baby. Simmer down. We ain't checking for you. You doing the same thing you always do. Talk behind people bad. Be quiet. And when somebody directly comes for you, then you got to say, well, this is what I said. And I ain't said it no mean way. And this, that. No, Candy, we won't hear from you. Kamala was checking y'all all and throwing y'all to the wayside. And I forgot. I think it was King had said, or was it Sheree? It, no, I think it was Sheree. She was saying that the last gown that uh, Marlo had sported on the show last night, she said uh, she looked like one of them candies my grandma used to give me. And they showed a picture of that uh, red strawberry candy that's like a, it kind of looked like a lozenge <laughs> or whatever, just a hard piece of candy. And they were saying that. Marlo's last outfit was giving them or giving Sheree that feel and I was like oh no she didn't oh no she didn't so all the women was being tasteful shady and I could I could uh take it I just Drew's door I don't know where she coming from I, I don't need to see her anymore on the show it, it, she just don't give me anything but Sheree was very very good I love how she came back in all the girls connected uh they went to go see um Kenya practice with her um uh, dancing partner Brandon with Dancing with the Stars now I didn't I thought Kenya was making all her trips to LA to practice but it seemed like Brandon had came down and probably stayed with her you know in the guest room or whatnot and they were doing the same thing that I was doing when I was telling y'all Kenya trying to get her groove on like Stella okay and she was a cougar in training herself trying to mess with Brandon but and I'm like it's nothing wrong with it piece of considering adult she's a considering adult it is what it is but anyway Anyway, I can't really say, so I'm just pre, uh, presuming, uh, presuming that he spent the night at Kenya's place while he was down uh, training with her with Dancing with the Stars, and he was spending a lot of quality time with her daughter Brooklyn. And you know, like I said, she knew him, and she wouldn't put anybody that she felt uh, wasn't a good friend or, or you know a permanent relationship that she wanted to have around Brooklyn. She just wouldn't do it. So uh, I'm gonna say they were training dancing and all of that stuff but anyway uh, they met up at the training spot or uh, the dance hall that Kenya and Brandon were partaking in at the time and uh, none of them really got there uh, meaning Candy, Sheree and Marlo when she was actually practicing but you know they got in their little huddle and everything and Sheree was being drilled by Marlo Marlo was drilling Kenya Kenya was drilling Marlo Candy and Sheree this is a cute scene. I can see where they're talking about sisterhood and all that kind of stuff. But I'm, I'm thinking it's just between those uh, women, those four women. Uh, but, you know, uh, Kenya, you know, they were getting on her about Brandon, that he was a cute little something, which she trying to do a little here and there. And she was just kicking and all that. But they said she looked good, which she did. And uh, they went on Sheree about what she's doing with her boyfriend. And um, she was saying that he's out. And they thought he was out like in Atlanta. But he wasn't. He was at the halfway house transitioning. And, you know, she was talking about she was celibate. And Marla said, celibate? And Candy like, celibate? Like, girl, you've been already away. You need to be up in there. And Kenya was like, surprised too. Like, girl, you need to be tasting the rainbow. Well, you know what I'm saying. You know, but it's just here what it is. Then they got on Marlo about, you know, her what she doing what she dating and she saying she said somebody but it's just like dinner dates is nothing you know more than that so she must have not called a millionaire yet so and she don't plan on spending her coin so it is what it is then we got because i was hoping that they would say something about apollo you know but they did and i guess that's just gonna be some scenes that come up later on maybe the fourth or fifth episode where she talks to apollo about you know, me getting back into society and how, you know, they treat their woman that been there for them while they were incarcerated and stuff of that nature. But, you know, they was very playful and uh, they got with Candy and Candy started, 
uh, saying that her and Tara, they hadn't been having sex, like, normally. And I'm like, really? I'm like, well, I guess just keeping it, being a human, I guess you do get tired, even though you're supposed to be known as the sex goddess queen to have all the answers to sex questions, sex positions, and all this, that, and the third, okay, and toys. And she just said, no, uh, basically me and... Todd, we we be tired. We said the VCR, whatever, talking about some TV show. They supposed to be nuzzled up together trying to watch. And they both go to sleep or she goes to sleep. Now, how Candy has been running down in these streets in these states. I could see why. Because she's doing a lot of press. And she's, you know, having to have to do all this, that, and the third. But, you know, Todd, you know, he's just in the, <coughs> excuse me. He's just behind closed doors, or he's out in the audience, or this, that, and the third. And nobody want to hear about Todd in the first place. He should be at home doing daycare, daycare with the girl and the boy, okay, with his son and his daughter. That's what he need to be doing, but he's still trying to trace these streets with Candy, thinking he's going to show and prove when we're still waiting on what he's doing with that truck line, you know, transfer a truck that he bought that he's going to be hauling shit with, and other business adventures that he um, pretty much let go belly up. But it was a cute scene in there where i don't know if it's gonna be next episode or episode three or four where um they're looking at some abandoned buildings uh she has purchased for Todd to be doing something with and he's like you know talking about he has a condo and i guess new york or somewhere still and they're talking about this house that uh i don't know uh, maybe it's an old house or maybe it's a prop property she's trying to flip or maybe it was her house that they live in now and they're just trying to renovate certain things and he had said well this ain't my house to show how my name ain't on this house I said ooh honey you having more than sex problems you having financial problems with this son of yours because he, he ain't your husband he's your son to me you know he's like you you taking care of him but then again you always said uh, what Marlo said is you take care of your man real well so we'll just take the son out there and say you just you know you're taking care of your man it's okay if you got the coins and you feel all right about it you feel lovely about it we like it okay that's all i can say but it seems like it's trouble in paradise unless they're making up a uh a falsehood storyline to juice up uh her her storyline because it's really uh flat line is dead as usual you know that's why i said I, you know she probably really need to go somewhere but can't they gonna let that money dry up until bob was saying they want her gone you know and it'd be on good terms it's just they can't do anything with her so i guess she's trying to drum up some storyline for herself with uh Tara not either interested in her because you know men you know they get hard with the wind especially if they got a nice looking woman beside them so it don't take them much to get you know hard unless they go the other way you know what i'm saying so if candy can get with girls it's not too far-fetched that Talk could get with guys allegedly. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah. But uh, Candy says she's been too busy and she's just been too tired to even try to sex her man. And then Molly said, "You better be giving him something. Just lay on the side and toss up your legs, trying to let him get it in." I'm like, Molly is crazy as hell. But everybody got a little kiki chuckle out of that one because you know, you know, and it is really kind of true. If you you don't serve them up, they will go where they can get served. It's a piss poor idea. And maybe they need to seek counseling or something. Or like Marlo said, she need to cut some of them businesses. You got at least two of them to have time to spend with him. Because if you got all that money and you ain't got no man, uh, and you want a man, uh, then you can't do anything but blame yourself. Because you should have been paying attention to home as well as trying to get that money. So I, I agree with Marlo when she made that assumption. But that's pretty much it, guys. But the one that I am rooting for and I want to see do well, and I believe she will do well, is Sanya. Sanya is my girl. And Kenya has always been my favorite, too. But, you know, Kenya is wanting some other people to shine. Because don't get it twisted. Now, she she's still going to be, the you know, the ace in the hole. She's going to still be the ace in the hole for Bravo. Because she come with it. But I can see her wanting to sit back and let other people make a fool out of themselves sometimes. And have to get just together you know what i'm saying and she just come up and just throw you know her little two cents in here and there <laughs> like she did last night when she had to look at drew sedora kind of up at the top of her head to the sole of her feet like where's this this child coming from because this is what this is a child trying to talk to me but um and then she called Sanya the uh 
<laughs> the bone collector and training. But I like Kenya, girl. Don't mess with this Jamaican woman. Don't mess with this Jamaican woman because I like both of y'all. Now it'll be very hard for me to choose between both of y'all because baby girl has came with it. Sanya Richards, Rosie, yes. Four-time gold Olympic medal champion. She won a bronze one time, but she said she ain't talking about this shit. <laughs> it was a bronze, meaning third place. No, she likes the gold. Go, go, go. All right, so and she can dress too, y'all. She not, I, I ain't mad at her. But those are my top two, Sanya and Kenya. And Milo runs a close third. And what When my daughter, when we was watching it, uh, last night she said uh, Marla was her favorite but to tell you the truth my top four it would be in this range Sanya, Kenya, Marlo and Sheree and of course the bottom two that one of them need to be cut I'm saying giving Candy the uh, you know the because she is an OG, she's been there a long time. I would keep her and get rid of Drew. Because Drew is absolutely not bringing anything. I mean, she's with a man who's been cheating forever in a day on her behind. They don't went to two counselors. And he's still cheating. Or alluding to somewhat cheating. Because he's still getting messages from people in his phone. And, and I don't know why Drew goes and look for... Uh, reference to get her gut feeling out the way that her man still cheating said you know like if that's all you got to tell us is you know your man cheating and you trying to hold on to a cheater check with uh other women out there that are not on shows such as this they ain't gonna put up with it it's you and your self-worth you need to be concerned about and your children all right but that's all i got for this um Season of Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 14, Episode 1. That was titled The Edge of Fashion. Okay, hope y'all like it, love it. And we will see y'all next video. Bye-bye.